Azra Nomani, a former Wall Street Journal reporter, in 2002, while she was in Pakistan investigating Islamic ideology behind the 9-11 attacks, her colleague, Daniel Pearl, was kidnapped by ISIS terrorists and then beheaded. Azra is also the author of Woke Army, the Red-Green Alliance, Destroying America's Freedom, which exposes the anti-Jewish network in America. She's also a senior fellow of, in the practice of journalism at the Independent Women's Forum, Independent Women's Network, sorry. Azra, welcome. Thank you so much, Cindy. I'm just so happy to have this conversation with you because we need to understand how we got here. Okay, that's exactly it. We, we need to understand how we got here. You know, since Hamas's barbaric attacks on Israel on October 7th, these protests that we've seen on university campuses and throughout the U.S. and cities across the Western world, we have these activists, you know, they're chanting from the river to the sea. I want to know, do they even realize that they're calling for Israel to be obliterated? Uh, a lot of people are shocked by this um, unleashing of anti-Semitism that we're seeing. Are, are you? I am not shocked at all. This has been 60 years in the making in the West. I was born in the summer of 1969 in a Muslim family in India. Uh, sorry, I was born in the summer of 1965 in a Muslim family in India. I arrived in the United States as Saudi extremism was being exported to the world. And what came with it? Muslim organizations that have now embedded themselves in the West, and they are the ones unleashing these protesters against Israel and Jews onto the streets and into the campuses. What we have is a multi-million dollar orchestrated campaign, and I'm speaking to you from the trenches of that, those efforts in the streets. I'm wearing today the uniform that I wear at these anti-Israel rallies. It's a hoodie that says Israel Defense Forces. I bought it in a Palestinian refugee shop that was in the West Bank selling secondhand clothes. And above it, I wear my shield of truth as a journalist. What I have seen now from Constitution Avenue to Pennsylvania Avenue should scare everyone, Cindy. So are you actually talking to protesters who are at these and asking them why they're there? What do they tell you? Oh my gosh, I am not only speaking to them, but using my phone as the weapon, right? The weapon that they, the terrorists, unleash upon us when they try to terrorize us and recording their statements. And what happened two weeks ago that along Constitution Avenue, American Muslims for Palestine, one of these many organizations, organized a march. Thousands waltzed down Constitution Avenue, past the Smithsonian Museum, and there I asked each one of them, from the Council on American Islamic Relations to the titans of uh, uh, the far left in the United States named Code Pink, do you condemn Hamas? Do you support the existence of the state of Israel? And they refused to answer. And Cindy, who did I see as the field marshal directing this march? None other than Linda Sarsour, the organizer of the Women's March that in 2017 refused to accept feminists from Israel, calling them colonizers and settler colonialists. You know, this language that has been used to dehumanize Jews and the people of Israel. And so I speak to them and they are refusing to accept the humanity of Jewish people or Israelis because they have decided that this is the moment that they will seize to destroy the state of Israel and eliminate Jews from the river to the sea. But how do they bring together this alliance of these leftist groups that, you know, are, you know, you've seen the signs, you know, Queers for Palestine, which obviously makes no sense. You wouldn't get very far holding that sign in Gaza. So how is it that they've fused these things together in a way that makes sense to the people who are actually on the streets? Oh my gosh, like this is my book right, woke army. It, it was a shocking cover for me to even see this nexus between the far left and the Islamists, you know, destroying America's freedom. But Cindy, it is as if the people, the characters from the book have now leapt onto the streets of our nation and our world. And how do they do it? Let me give you a couple examples. So this is one of the actual posters last Saturday 
I picked it up, journalist trick, you know this, you wait till everybody leaves and you pick up their trash and you get the signs from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. But what was the chant that they said in Arabic? Philistine al Arabiya, which means Palestine is Arab from the river to the sea. So they have code. And who organized this one? The Islamist groups, US Palestinian Community Network, one of the many Islamist groups that believe in political Islam. And who have they aligned with them? This is what's so critical. You have to see the fine print, as you know, as a journalist. Stand with Palestine and the occupation, right? They use these big words. Who is it that sponsored this? The Party for Socialism and Liberation. Socialism and Liberation. That's the far left. And who are they? Multi-million dollar global networks that are trying to infuse the socialist far left agenda into our nations. They are aligned then. Look at this one. We're gonna break the fourth wall here. Workers World Party, the far left communist organization. And so what your the entire thesis of your program might seem hyperbolic to some people, but it is in fact exactly what's happening in the streets of our Western capitals, our cities, our colleges, and it is a multi-million dollar network of organizations that are unleashing these street warriors of the woke army against America, the West, and Israel and Jews. One of the things that has astounded me by what we've seen, not only is everybody out on the streets in lockstep, but they're doing the exact same things, right? They're holding the same signs, ripping down the pictures of the hostages wherever they find them. Are they, is this messaging that's going out or what's your explanation for how they've oh. proceeded so identically? Yeah, Cindy, talking points. They share Google Docs and in the Google Doc, they have the talking points. Why are the chants all the same? Because they have created digital toolkits, which is what every grassroots organization has, right? And what are they basing all of this on? Like, I want to just connect the dots for everyone. For several years now, we have heard about this concept of critical race theory, right? This ideology that has infused our schools. And what they have done is they are using the talking points of the oppression matrix the privilege bingo that our poor children have had to experience in our school system so that now it's an upside down world in which Jews are the occupiers, the colonists, and the aggressors. When there, and there's no mention of them as victims as happened in the October 7th attacks. And so there I was, Cindy, this past Saturday. I, you know, being a reporter, I love your segment because we are on the streets and you don't have to be in Gaza to see what is happening in the trenches. So what happened? I knew to follow the march and I knew where they were headed, the gates of the White House. And so I, I went, I know the streets, been reporting them since I was 18. And Cindy, there I was. And the horde of marchers was coming towards not only the White House, but towards me in front of the White House. And I found myself with my back, with the same uniform pinned against the gates of the White House, the fence that they've got. And indeed, this man climbed over me with this big banner of the martyrs, celebrating the martyrs. And what did they do then? They flung the Palestinian flag through the gaps in the fence onto the White House lawn. And these are the types of posters that they then taped to the White House gates, murdered by Israel. <clears throat> they flipped the narrative. It's called, you know, moral inversion. They flipped the narrative so that now in this new hierarchy of human value, the Israel, Israelis and the Jews were the oppressors and the Palestinians were the victims and there was no sense of the humanity of all. And we then saw I saw personally, they painted their hands red, slapped that against the gate that enters into the White House and put red handprint all over that, you know, White House pretty and chanted then genocide Joe. 
Genocide Joe. They turned this woke army, turned their target now upon the Democrats and Joe Biden. And that unholy alliance that the Democrats had established with the Islamists and the far left is now coming home to roost. And they now have their sights set on Joe Biden. And the inconsistency and the inversion is just so blatant because they're calling, you know, genocide Joe when meanwhile from the river to the sea is literally calling for genocide. And and those posters, you know, that's astounding what you just showed because it's the exact same graphic, you know, layout as the kidnapped victims that, you know, are being put up and ripped down by them. Wow. And that's what they did. That's what they did is they took the same image and that this is the moral inversion. This yeah. has happened so many times now in the media images from the Holocaust and Syria are being used as images from Gaza. And what do you have at the bottom? The QR code. That tells you that this is part of that established multi-million dollar campaign against Israel to destroy the state of Israel and the people that live there. All right, we're out of time. Azra, thank you so much. It's um, yeah, fascinating. Thank you for showing us what you found out there. Thank you very much. Thank you.